roguelikes, or roguelites if you're annoying, get their name much like Souls games from an old PC game called Rogue. Being the first of its kind, it more so set the groundwork for the genre, such as procedurally generated levels and permadeath, but I can't really say I've given it a good try. My Zoomer Subway Surfer's short-term gratification brain can't really get into it, but these days, most roguelikes incorporate some kind of permanent progression into the core gameplay loop, unlike Rogue. This is where the genre's roguelite, or roguelike-like, came from. For this video, however, you can assume I'm referring to the light or like-like part. Achievement-gated items and currency that you spend during or persists after a run are pretty much the only criteria to be classified as a rogue-like light like There are a myriad of different ways people take the concept from there though, like this, this, and th this, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about some I think you might want to try out. I'm sure at least one of them will catch your interest, no matter if you consider yourself a super casual gamer or seasoned roguelike grinding free. Starting from my personal introduction to the genre, The Binding of Isaac, Rebirth and the original Newgrounds game, yeah, I'm cool like that, I played it on New is about Isaac and his, and his mother. mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. His mother hears the voice of God telling her basically to fuck up this kid's life and take his drip. Obviously, Isaac escapes through the magical trap door that leads to a not-so-magical literal shithole, obviously. All of that, combined with the trauma of his Jordans getting ripped up, makes him sob so hard that he can fucking shoot worms with his tears. Seriously, this game is clearly weird and can be pretty dark albeit in an amusing way, and deals with religious abuse and some heavier topics in a very unserious manner. While it isn't exactly vital that you understand or care about any of that, not many games deal with Christian extremism or are as overt with their parody of the Bible, which is pretty cool IMO and definitely adds to the game's overflowing personality. Even putting that aside, it really carves out its own spot at the peak of the mountain. To someone who hasn't seen the game before, may as well have endless amounts of items, monsters and boss variety, characters to unlock, routes to explore, and synergies that paint a wide spectrum of absurdities. Cool, funny, confusing, odd, terrible, game-breaking, game-breaking. Honestly, even as someone who has spent an obscene amount of time in my life playing this game on various platforms, might as well have infinite content. To me as well, I mean, shit. There's fucking daily challenges and leaderboards, as well as static challenges that all unlock various items or mechanics, 17 characters that greatly switch up how you approach the game, as well as 17 more tainted versions of each character, which add some sort of creative or cruel gimmick that greatly change up how you approach the game. <laughs> Not to mention alternate game modes, unlockable routes, or Steam Workshop mods. That on its own might as well be fucking Pandora's box. Moving away from that rabbit hole, I like how much Isaac evokes that dungeon crawling feeling inspired by the first Zelda. Maybe it's the more rustic caves and mine shafts, or maybe it's just nostalgia. I can say for sure that rabbit hole is a great way to describe both. The kind of game that has so much reading the wiki only really helps you with specific questions you already have. If you want a game that's kind of like Isaac, but maybe a little less grim or a little more modern, then a game like Enter the Gungeon is really good. But Enter the Gungeon and I have a complicated relationship. First, it seemed like we were a match made in heaven, but now I can see the purgatory I put myself in. Dramatism aside, this game is super cute. The gimmick of everything being either some kind of gun and or bullet doesn't really get old. Dodge roll games really gets creative with it, but man has this game put me through the blender. Not unlike another game I'll get to later. I'm looking at you. I really enjoy this one. And while I admit I'm not nearly as seasoned in this game as some of the other ones in this video, Dungeon is special to me because it still feels like it has so much to discover within it, which is really the best thing a roguelike can do for me. What better motivation to shoot peas or ice cubes or mail or whatever the fuck than knowing that there are so many weird items or references, cute and fucked up enemies, new ways to interact with the game or plot somehow that I'm trying to comprehend, there's some time travel shit going on here, knowing that everything it has shown me has consistently put a smile on my tired face, as well as knowing that I can do it all with a friend. That's right, 
It's local fucking co-op, and it doesn't suck ass or have the second player do some weird shit like some other games I know. I like showing this game to my friends and trying to play with them. The second player comes with a revive, so I can let them try out any of the characters while doing a new one myself, and giving them more chances to learn and chill, and to directly help them without, like, and not be a shitty little baby like an Isaac, since I can get them back once at least. It's not one of those games I really know much about that makes it easier to have fun simply clearing the rooms or sometimes floors <laughs> with a friend, which is all I really want to do when playing a random game with someone, vibe and have a good time. Ocho is not the kind of game I vibe while playing. Ocho is the kind of game that has me tensed up trying to control my breathing, focused on my surroundings, freaking out at something going even slightly different than I planned. Essentially, Ocho is Hotline Miami, but a roguelike, super fast gameplay, and almost instant time to kill for both the player and non-boss enemies, constant weapon switching, and the consistent feeling that you are totally fucked. Though, you do have focus, which is your single lifeline when you're clearing the rooms. Focus is a short, simple time slow, letting you react to the bullets to more easily move or roll out of the way, or give yourself more time to aim. Bullet time. This can be upgraded or modified along with the rest of the game through drinking at the bar. For those who have played roguelikes before, this should seem standard enough. Some flat upgrades, some with pros and cons, and the fun ones, like a pet dog or a drone that attacks enemies boning a kunai in your hand every time you roll, or the Wanderer, otherwise known as the Goat, sometimes appearing to deadeye some bandits like you're in Red Dead. There are a whole bunch more to find and unlock, along with weapons and challenges, standard roguelike stuff. But the gameplay loop is what I find most enjoyable. Much more straightforward than a lot of other roguelikes, it doesn't like to waste your time searching through a wiki to figure out what the fuck this mass of shapes you just picked up does, or how to unlock the thing you need to actually progress in the game fucking dead cells. It's got a gumball machine gotcha game for that. Ocho is a great secondary game or something you load up sometimes just to have fun. It's stupid cheap on G2A, like a dollar. Go ahead and give it a try if you have any interest. It won't disappoint. This game is fucked up. Shit got me dead cells. It's pretty unforgiving. Now you may be asking yourself, what? And I'm here to answer. Dead Cells is an action, rogue, souls, like, light, vania, funny, indie game that doesn't really hide its influences at all. I mean, they are actually right there. Just look. It doesn't need to hide them. In fact, it kind of expects people to take some of their experience into it for many little things, like wall food. It's a vampire thing, don't worry about it. Or various weapons that are pulled straight from their respective games. The way it combines all of this, and how easy it is to flow between the different mechanics while constantly expanding itself while you play through the player's achievements, or seemingly insignificant interactions, and a lot of DLC, don't worry it's cheap, is how Motion Twin crafts its own experience with the bones of their ancestor, and it does not play around. There is no Hades respawning unless you want to fill one of your very limited upgrade slots with it. There is no standardized damage when being hit. These are numbers. There is no mercy from the guys on this island. You could be having the run of your life, not taking a single hit, keeping all your heals and getting the speedrun rewards, and it can all just disappear in seconds from Big Boy Ben or some fucking other random enemy that happens to fuck up your health bar. The reason it can be so unforgiving and still feel fair though is the responsiveness to player actions combined with all the choices you make throughout a single run. I always think back to some mutation I could have picked to survive better, or if I built my prisoner more intentionally, maybe going all in on what is essentially a melee stat, or perhaps spreading my levels to tactics and brutality while saving survivability for later in the run, when that 70% health boost for the first upgrade is a much bigger deal. Thinking about how I could have played differently motivates me to try all over again, even if it feels like me and the run I just lost were childhood best friends. <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> and encourages me to try new items and builds and experiment instead of banging my head against the brick wall trying to force the same sort of build. Feels like what's most important in this game is allowing yourself to adapt as you play. Don't let yourself stubbornly try and push through with the items you already like. I feel like I have to sift through all the items and find the utility in my options. There are times where a flawless sapphire will show up and that really is a great feeling, but you can't rely on winning the lottery to pay your bills. I mean, unless you're someone like me though. 
I have gambling issues. Of course, you will get better as you die over and over and over and over and over and learn what attacks are the most dangerous, which enemies to target first, and maybe even start to figure out the rules for how each map generally generates. Suddenly, you'll start autopiloting through most situations, maybe trying to open those no-hit doors after boss fights, or those fucked up 30 second speedrun doors, but that would be ignoring that this entire time, you've actually been playing on pussy little baby bitch mode. You're only allowed into the next difficulty after you complete one full run, and you get access to some of those confusing ass doors with the circle on them that never did anything for the past 10 hours. And they have chests, sometimes a shortcut to another level. Man, this game is fucking hard. This shit is pissing me off right now. You know, fuck this game. Why am I even talking about this shit? Ugh, fuck. I wanna unlock more shit, never mind. I'm trudging through. I have to beat it like six more times to see it all though. Roguelikes may seem overwhelming, and they very well can be, but part of what makes them so engaging is the sense of wonder and curiosity, wondering what else could this game be hiding from you. Speculating about cryptic clues, testing your own theories, and simply letting your adventurous spirit take control. These games are the type to compound on themselves. You don't need to see everything to have truly played it, or gotten all that you want from a game. However, comma, once you find your game, and if you like video games, you will. The genre is far too varied, and talented creatives are constantly coming out with fresh takes on the genre and tropes, along with combining it with every other game genre that's ever existed, so there is something for you specifically. Yes, you. Hey, I'm talking to you. You can go find your own rabbit hole to tumble down. One of them is probably Wonderland, just watch out for the spike pit. If you still don't believe me, and are too lazy to try anything you don't know, never fear. This is the first part to this video. I'm already working on talking about some wacky different ones. Much different vibe, trust me. Hey, this one showed up earlier. Hi, Muck. The first person survival crafting roguelike. Until then though, don't forget to subscribe, and I think you should play more roguelikes.